Ladies and gentlemen, let's for Gamers to the video, a series of GPU-Z and 3D Mark images have popped up, supposedly showing the specs and performance of NVIDIA's latest entry into the Maxwell lineup, that would be the GTX 960. If you want more information as well as some links to the sources, you can check out the article, but until then, let's blast through it. I don't want to put the images into the video for obvious reasons. I imagine probably NVIDIA are not too happy that these have popped out, but anyway... So back in January the 5th, obviously this year, we'd reported a rumour that, by the way, was thanks to a retailer leak, that the GPU would feature 128-bit memory bus and 2 gigabytes of RAM and looked to feature 1024 to 1280 CUDA cores. Many were hoping that this wasn't 100% accurate, but it looks like it is. And the final GPU does indeed feature that memory configuration, but also features 1024 CUDA cores, so not even the 1280, which is a bit of a shame. Rounding that up, you've also got 32 ROPs and 64 texture mapping units. For sake of comparison, the GTX 970, which is its bigger brother obviously, has 1664 CUDA cores, while the 980 has 2048 which is once again double the GTX 960. That's quite a significant difference, I'm sure you'll agree. In terms of memory bandwidth, once again, the numbers we'd already had are pretty darn accurate. You're looking at the memory running at 1753 MHz, providing memory bandwidth of 112 gigabytes per second. It's okay, but you'd expect a little bit more if I'm totally honest. That is exactly half, though, of what is in the GTX 980. The memory clock is the same, but the bus width is double, 256-bit, so it's possible that if you count the fact that it's half the amount of ROPs, half the amount of shaders, or CUDA cores if you prefer, then possibly memory bandwidth is right on par where it should be. There are a couple of points that aren't clear yet. The first is TDP. Supposedly, it's being shown at 120 watts, but that's not confirmed at all. Um, the second is the core clock. GPU-Z is showing it to be 1228 MHz, boosting to 1291. The problem is that, as many of you know, EVGA, uh, key, uh, pretty much all of the manufacturers, actually, I'm not going to go through the whole list, all run different core clocks to what NVIDIA recommend. So in other words, the recommended from NVIDIA could be 1200, it could be 1150, who the hell knows? So it's a good bet that this is slightly overclocked from default how much, whether it's 1200 MHz, whether it's 1150, it's just unknown. But let's assume it's a subtle overclock, so let's say a couple of percent, which is generally typical for the lower or the cheaper cards anyway, because obviously the higher the core clock, the harder it is for them to make sure that, of course, the silicon reaches that bin. Quite literally. So what does that mean? Well, 3D Mark is hitting, um, for uh, 2011, is hitting 9,000, 9, I'm sorry, 9,960, while the extreme version is hitting 3,321. This is running on a Haswell 4770K at what I'm assuming is default clock speeds. What type of performance is that? Well, pretty much in the lineup of the R928s, for example. What we're basically looking here is not a performance monster. What we're looking at here is a card that, assuming these numbers are right, is going to have to compete in terms of price and it's going to have to compete in TDP. In other words, the R9 280 is pretty much in this ballpark. I mean, I've tested the card myself and this is right around where we were getting uh, the numbers. Assuming the Maxwell's TDP is accurate at 120 watts, the R9-285, which of course is based on the Tonga architecture, is running about 190 of memory serves. So it is a bit of a difference, but I guess it depends on the price point. If NVIDIA are charging, let's just assume, £50, or whatever it is in your currency extra, I mean, I'm just guessing at the prices at this point, 
do you really want to spend that for just a couple of frames per second potentially in a lower TDP? Maybe some people would. Who knows? As I said, these are only leaked numbers and we don't know how accurate they are. At the end of the day, we have to see what's going on in the games. But early indications are this card is pretty much in the ballpark we expect. Um, I would personally like to see what's going to happen in cross, uh, sorry, SLI scaling. 1440p, for example, that would be quite, quite a performance benchmark to see. I would like to see whether the bandwidth, the amount of memory, particularly on the default 2 gigabyte models, is going to come into play. We know the 1080p and 2 gigs, they're on the borderline. In other words, it's on the borderline of, is it going to start running up VRAM? Some games now start hitting the 2 gigs, maybe slightly more, particularly if you're using MSAA or something that's slightly less efficient. Um, so, all we could do is play the waiting game. Uh, so if you're looking at a mid-range card based on these numbers, you probably will be better to go for the cheaper one. As for the process, in other words, is it 28 or 20 NM? If you believe this, it is still a 28 NM process, so unfortunately it's not been shrunk down any further. And it is, of course, all going to be revealed in the next few weeks. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.